Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning uh, Sunday school lesson for November the 28th. Our today's lessons will be confidence in times of testing. The point of the lesson is trust God even when your faith is tested. The passage for this will be out of Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 through 14. We're going to pick up again with Abraham. Uh, last week we had uh, our session out of uh, Psalms 100 on uh, Psalm and praises to our Heavenly Father and now we're back into our uh, final uh, chapter here of our book for this uh, quarter with Abraham and, and Isaac and, and Sarah and the things that the Lord's doing in their lives. Every summer, many people uh, go to Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore in Michigan to hike. Every step forward up the steep dunes actually seems like a half a step backwards as your feet sink in the sand. This strenuous hike will test the limits of your physical ability. However, it is worth every grueling step when you reach the top and look out over the Great Lake crystal blue waters of Lake Michigan. We can feel tested to our limits in many different ways. Pre parenting a child, balancing a budget, navigating a new position at work, or reconciling tensions with friends or a spouse, just to name a few. Life will always test us, and we can't escape it. This also includes the testing of our faith. In order for our faith to be stretched and strengthened, God will allow that faith to be tested. How do we maintain trust and confidence in our faith when those times of testing come? <clears throat> How do we stay the course when our spiritual tests seem to surpass our limits? Let's watch and learn how Abraham was able to pass his faith test. In our setting, Abraham still needed refining and testing. By the fact that he asked Sarah to lie again when they met King Amalek of Gerar. Abraham did not trust the Lord, but the Lord protected Sarah anyway. In Genesis 20, God promised Isaac would be born to Sarah and he would confirm the covenant with Isaac. Isaac was born and new problems arose with Hagar, which was uh, Sarah's slave. And Ishmael was uh, Hagar's son. Ha they had to leave. It was time for God to test Abraham like never before. Some, in Genesis 22, verses 1 through 2, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain that I will show you. Abraham faced various tests and sometimes he failed. Now he would meet the most significant test of all. God tested Abraham. The Hebrew word for testing means that God was going to prove the quality of Abraham's faith and character. God was not going to tempt Abraham to do evil. But God already knew how Abraham would respond, and after the testing, others would know of his character and faith. We uh, also see where Satan came before God about the prophet, about Job, and uh, asked God, he said, you know, if you just take your wall down from around Job, uh, and I will uh, put him to my temptations, um, and we'll see that he'll fail. So we know that God, he does testing of our faith to help strengthen us and to move us forward. We know that Satan and his temptations causes things in our lives that takes us away from our Heavenly Father and causes us to lose that relationship that we had with him and feel that uh, we are not worthy to come back to him. But we know that confession of our sins, that he is always faithful and just to receive us back and the scriptures tells us that those sins are no longer remembered. God has various purposes for trials in our lives. In James 1, verses 2 through 4, instructs believers to consider it a pure joy to experience various trials for the testing of your faith produces perseverance. When endurance has full effect, 
the believer will be mature and complete, not lacking anything. 1 Peter 1, verses 6 through 7 teaches that the trials can refine one's faith and prove the reality of it. Abraham's testing showed the reality of his faith. The testing God allows in our lives works for us, not against us. <clears throat> God uses trials to help us grow, but Satan tempts us to destroy us. We read in James 1, 13 through 15, that God does not tempt anyone. A person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Desire is the first step of temptation. The second step is deception. Abraham was enticed to deceive King Amalek and claim that Sarah was his sister and not his wife, so he might save his life from the king. God calls his followers to be truthful. The third step in temptation is disobedience. Abraham was deceptive. God does not lie. He does not want his followers to deceive others. James 1 through 15 says, After desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin gives birth to death. God said to him, Abraham, and Abraham answered, Here am I. He was ready to listen and obey. God had spoken to Abraham before, so he was familiar with the voice of God. This chapter records the last account of God speaking directly to Abraham. However, Abraham would remain faithful to God, and Genesis 24, 1 says, The Lord had blessed him in every way. God created righteousness to Abraham, credited righteousness to Abraham because of his faith, and his faithfulness led to blessings he enjoyed. Abraham would live to be 175 years old and was contented at his passing. Verse 2, God told Abraham, Take your son, your only son, whom you love. Sacrifice him as a burnt offering. God called Isaac Abraham's only son since Ishmael was no longer an heir, and more importantly because Isaac was the child of promise. Isaac was the son Abraham loved most, and the fulfillment of God's promises rested in Isaac. In Hebrews eleven seventeen, the writer mentions that by faith Abraham offered his one and only son. John three sixteen uses the same Greek word where it says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. What a wonderful foreshadow of the work of Christ. Abraham loved his only son Isaac, but was willing to sacrifice him at God's command. Hebrews eleven nineteen says Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And in so matter of speaking, he did not perceive, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. Isaac would have died if God had not stayed Abraham's hand. So figuratively, Abraham received him back from the dead. Likewise, God would offer his son on the cross to die, and the Messiah would be resurrected from the dead. In John 8, 56, Jesus said, Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. We might question whether the foreshadowing was intentional, but it certainly is a beautiful illustration of Christ's death and resurrection. Abraham was to take his son to the region of Moriah. The traditional location of Abraham's attempted sacrifice of Isaac is the site of Solomon's temple at Jerusalem, where the Dome of the Rock presently exists. The exact location is uncertain, but Moriah probably was in the Jerusalem area in 2 Chronicles 3.1. Pagans often, sac often sacrificed their children to their gods. Did Abraham love God enough to do that? As we'll see, he loved God enough to sacrifice his son, and he had enough faith to believe that God could bring his son back from the dead if he needed. To be honest, God's instructions to Abraham seem incredibly outlandish, even unimaginable. God's bold commanded, <clears throat> command has caused many people to scratch their heads and wonders as they've read these passages. Here was God asking the 100-year-old Abraham to sacrifice the very son that he promised him for 25 years. This is the long-awaited Isaac, the heir of the promise by God. 
Now, after all that, God told Abraham to sacrifice him like a lamb on the altar. How would you describe the difference between being between temptation and testing? In recapping, God tested Abraham. God's word does not say God tempted Abraham, but God will test us. But he will never tempt us. James pointed out when temptation, when temptation, no one should say God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Satan tempts us to sin in order to break us down and to pull us away from God. But God tests us to build us up and pull us closer to himself. When we feel drawn to something, we should wisely ask ourselves, is this a test or temptation? I do this, if you do this, it will strengthen your faith and bring you closer to God, or will you pull, or will it pull him, pull you away from God? Like Abraham, the longer we walk in fellowship with God, the more we'll recognize his voice. The call to sacrifice his son may have seemed extreme, but Abraham knew very well the one who was calling. In our transition, our faith will often be tested. In the next verses, we will see that we are to trust God even in the midst of the test. In Genesis 22, verses 3 through 10, Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked, <clears throat> looked up and saw the place in the distance. Seems very interesting, you know, the third day it took Abraham to get there. The third day, Christ our Savior arose. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood from the burnt, for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said this to his father. Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on top of it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Regardless of any questions Abraham may have had, he still responded with prompt obedience. Even though he didn't have all the answers, even though he didn't fully understand what God was doing, and even though he did not know how the story would end, he still proceeded, being very aware of his own imperfections and mistakes. Abraham chose to trust in a perfect God who does not make mistakes. We see early the next morning they loaded up his donkey and immediately set out at God's command. Abraham did not ask God for an explanation. Instead, he trusted God and obeyed. He took with him two servants and his son Isaac. When they had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out. Verse 4, it took three days for Abraham to reach his destination. Abraham, the two young men, and Isaac left Bathsheba, which they li was likely the main city in Negev at the time. And again, their destination was probably in the area of Jerusalem. The distance from Bathsheba to Jerusalem was about 45 miles, and that would not have been a problem for the four walking with a donkey to carry their supplies. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place that God had chosen in the distance. In verse 5, Abraham told the young man to stay with the donkey, and then he said, I and the boy will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham planned to offer his son as a burnt offering as God directed. 
Still, he also had, was confident that Isaac would return with him. Isaac was the child to whom God would fulfill his promises to Abraham. And Abraham knew God would somehow keep his promise. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it in his son Isaac, who probably was a teenager or a young man at that time. In addition, Abraham carried the fire and the knife. Abraham carried a fire, which likely means he carried a torch or a flint. Isaac was also old enough to know that something was missing. <clears throat> the lamb for the burnt offering. <clears throat> Abraham told Isaac, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. The word prov provide is usually translated as see. God will see the need. Abraham answered in faith that God himself will provide the lamb. Abraham believed God would see everything and provide as needed. Abraham did not know what would happen. He only knew that God had told him to, what God had told him to do. However, he trusted God to provide a sacrifice. After all, Isaac was the promised one, and the hope of the world rested on him. And when God... And when had God been uh, faithful in the past? So God would provide Abraham and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, so God would provide. Abraham did not tell Isaac that he would be the sacrifice. Abraham did not need to say that to Isaac, and he did not lie. Of course, he did not know what God had in mind, but he knew that God would provide. The two went on together. The same statement can be found in verse 6 and indicates the silence that each had while stepping into the unknown. If Isaac had any doubts about the intentions of his father, that would have been the time for him to toss the wood and to run. But Isaac trusted his father and was learning to trust God as well. They reached the place God had told him about. Abraham was led by the Lord, was trusting the Lord, and was following the Lord's directions. Abraham built the altar. He made an elevated place to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. The construction of the altar would have taken some time as Abraham gathered stones and put them in place. Then Abraham placed some wood on top of the altar. We can only imagine what thoughts were running through Isaac's mind as all this was taking place. During this time of building the altar, I'm, I'm sure that Isaac was helping in the gathering of the stones and stuff himself. And we look back at Jesus' life, we, <clears throat> we know that uh, the tree that he was uh, sacrificed on was a tree that he himself had grown. We see these things in so many, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we see so many simulations uh, here in what is taking place here and, and the foreshadowing of what is yet to come and what uh, we ourselves are the benefactors of. As Abraham bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood, the scene reminds us of how Jesus carried his cross. <clears throat> he would uh, be bound and sacrificed. Whether Isaac put up any resistance or not, we would soon, uh, he would soon learn that God would provide. Abraham then took the knife to slay his son. Abraham Complete trust in God revealed his incredible faith. He believed that the God who sees would provide even a resurrection of his son, if indeed. In this way, the story provides a foreshadowing of Christ's death and resurrection. When we undergo seasons of testing, we must uh, cancel out the noise of negativity. We need to recognize that we will experience real attacks along the way to tempt us into disobedience. Keep pressing forwards in obedience to Christ. And that's why when uh, something comes our way that we're to ask, you know, will, will this uh, that is coming my way take me from God or cause me to go and uh, cause me to go into sin? Or will this be a uh, testing and cause me to be stronger in my faith with what the Lord has shown me? In the next verses, we will see that God provides a provision that's always on time. And I found this to be very uh, 
true in, in my life and different things where it come down to uh, the very day that uh, something was to take place, that uh, something was to either come through or not, and that I was to move forward from that point. But God was always faithful, and, and uh, he was uh, never late, but always on time. And in waiting in, uh, and trying to be patient in his time frame, it helped me to have a stronger faith. And also, as I relate these things that God has done in my life, it helps others to know and to understand that there are times that the Lord makes us to wait because the timing is not uh, ready and everything that needs to be in place for completion and the glory of God is not there. In Genesis 22, verses 11 through 14, But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here am I, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Abraham had prepared to plunge the knife into his son, but the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven. Abraham loved God more than he loved even his own family. Indeed, Abraham's love for God provided an example for Isaac to put the Lord first in his life as well. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son in obedience to God was one of the noblest actions in the Old Testament. After Abraham answered the Lord, the Lord told Abraham, Do not lay a hand on the boy. Don't do anything to him. God never intended for Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Rather, God desired to show that Abraham loved him more than anything or anyone. Abraham's faith was put to the ultimate test, and he did not hold back from God. Abraham showed that he would not spare his beloved son Isaac if God desired for him to sacrifice his son. Along the same lines in Romans 8.32 says that God did not spare his own son. He gave him up for us all. However, God will not allow Abraham to make that sacrifice. There was no need for it. God's design was to showcase the remarkable faith of Abraham and to grow Abraham's faith through this test. Isaac also had faith and trusted his father when Abraham said God would provide the sacrifice. The Lord kept Abraham from killing his son, but considered it a sacrificial offering nevertheless, since Abraham was willing to obey the Lord and sacrifice his beloved son. Abraham looked up, and there he saw a ram. Abraham told uh, Isaac earlier in Genesis 22:8 that God himself would provide the lamb. The word lamb could refer to either a sheep or a goat. However, in verse 13, has a different word. Ram refers to a male sheep. Sheep. In Exodus 12, 5, God told the Israelites, the lamb used for the Passover must be a male. So God provided a ram for Abraham to offer in place of Isaac. Abraham went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. The word burnt offering means to go up and smoke or ascend. When the burnt offering took place, the fire consumed the entire animal at the altar except perhaps for the hide or the skin, which might be given to the priest who made the sacrifice. The full destruction of the animal indicated the worshiper was giving himself completely to God. Burnt offerings provided atonement for sin and renewed a sinner's relationship to God. The burnt offering of a male lamb prefigured the work of Jesus as the Lamb of God, who would take away the sins of the world and being reconciled between a holy God and sinful man. The concept of substitution is clear as Abraham offered the ram instead of his son. The place where God provided the ram was na named the Lord will provide. As in verse 8, the word translated provide means see. The Lord saw Abraham's need and provided what was needed. So Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. Not only name 
not only would the name of the place be a mon memorial to what God did there, but it also become a proverbial saying of encouragement. When an Israelite was obedient to God and in need, a friend could say, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Trust and obey, God will provide, just as God provided for Abraham. The life of the Apostle Paul is a wonderful example of the truth that the ultimate way God provides for us through Jesus Christ. Paul expressed thanks to the Philippians for meeting his needs, but he also told them he was not seeking the gift. He sought more to be, sought more to be credited to your account in Philippians 4.17. He was more concerned for them than he was for himself, and he gratefully added that he was amply supplied. Ensure that by God, will, and that God will meet all their needs according to the riches of his glory in Jesus Christ. As we seek to obey God, we can meet our every need too. May it be said today for the faithful believer as it was in Israel, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Earlier, Abraham told Isaac that God would provide the lamb for the sacrifice. He didn't know if... We don't know if Abraham initially believed God would intervene with an actual lamb or if he reasoned from the start that his son uh, that God had provided was the lamb he provided. If God had given an old man this promised son, though, he could also raise his son from the dead. In Hebrews 11, 17 through 19, by faith, God, <clears throat> Abraham, when God tested him, offered his son Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promise was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Verse 18, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Verse 19, Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking, he received Isaac back from the dead. What do we learn about God's provision from this passage that we've gone through? We see that nothing is impossible for him. And as we study uh, through the scriptures, we see time and time again, as uh, people followed God's direction, that he provided for each and every need for them. Sometimes we take those side roads and we find ourselves in a wilderness. But when we look back and, and uh, seek the Lord and ask for forgiveness of our sins, he brings us back and provides those things that he needs for us. And reinstates that relationship that we broke, not him, back to himself. In the point of this lesson, we see that to trust God even when you're tested. In living it out, ask for God, where might God be testing you with what seems like a ridiculous request. Have you been delaying or are you obeying promptly? What might the enemy be tempting you physically or mentally to get off course? Remember, take a moment to look back on God's track record in your life. Write down where you have seen God show off his power. Take some time now and ask God to continue to show off in your seasons of testing. Share where you have seen God's prevention as, prote as protection played out in your life. Take some time right now and thank him for the prevention. Then share that testimony with someone who might need to hear it in the coming days. As we go through this season of Thanksgiving, let us all be thankful for what our Heavenly Father has done for us through his Son, Jesus Christ, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within us that helps us in our everyday life. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for what you have done for us and provisions that you have made, setting each one of us up with all that we need, Heavenly Father. I thank you also, Father, for the many blessings that you've not only bestowed on me and my family, but on those uh, families around us, Heavenly Father. We thank you so much, Father, for our church family that you have brought us together. And I pray, Heavenly Father, as we continue on and look into the coming new year, Heavenly Father, that you will help us 
to reach out to other families outside these walls and to help them to come to know Jesus as their personal Savior. Help us, Father, to be ever mindful of the things that you have done for us, to be ever quick to take and proclaim those things in a, the testimony of our voices so that others may know and be assured of the things in their life that you will do. Father, we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.